webinar. It's uh, just 10 a.m. here in India, which is where the speaker is. So good morning to all of you from India. Good afternoon to those who are farther east or good evening to others in the world. Uh, welcome to all of you. I see that the attendees, the participant number is going up. So maybe we just wait for another minute or so till it stabilizes and then we can get started. I'm Sahana Murthy. I'm the moderator of this webinar. Okay, I think we can get started. Um, so again, welcome all to this webinar uh, hosted by the APSI SIG PTP, Practice Driven Research, Teacher Professional Development and uh, Policy in ICT in Education. Uh, today's webinar is uh, on building communities of practice in online education, a designer's perspective. Uh, so it's a bit unusual, it's the title. Uh, it's by Dr. Samir Sahasrabuddhe, who is the director of the Educational Multimedia Research Center in Pune in India. And uh, let me just give a brief introduction to Samir and then hand it over to him because he wants to tell you a little bit more about his background to give some context. So prior to Samir joining as director of EMMRC, he was a research scientist at IIT Bombay for several years. And uh, he's one of the co-creators of the learner-centric MOOC model. Uh, and he's worked, he's, he's worked tremendously on the IIT Bombay X platform, which is a MOOC platform uh, derived from edX. Um, he is originally a designer and animator and filmmaker, and he's created 3D animation course uh, that is being subscribed by uh, more than 25,000 learners globally. And it, uh, one of his courses was also shortlisted for the edX 2019 prize. Uh, so I'll just, end my introduction by giving us my personal background of Samir. So I've known him for the past uh, 11 years in all these various roles as a designer, as an animator, as a colleague, we were doing research together, uh, as a person who's doing tremendous outreach and building uh, communities of practice. That is really the correct word, getting people mobilized in, um, in the, in doing effective online education, in thinking about research-based teaching practices, in just getting together and doing something interesting. Uh, he's also worked with the Indian government on their Swayam platform in uh, training instructors uh, in moving online. So that's why we thought that he's actually, you know, his profile fits very well for each of the letters of the SIG, P, P and P. So welcome, Samir. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you and over to you. Uh, just before uh, handing over, a couple of quick housekeeping uh, announcements. So if you have any questions, please type them in Q&A. Uh, I will uh, moderate the questions. And if there is, uh, you know, if there is something urgent, like suddenly something disappears, the voice disappears, you can just quickly type it in chat. But otherwise, please keep your questions to Q&A. Okay, over to you, Samir. Okay, so hello and uh, namaste from India. And uh, as uh, I saw that uh, people have joined from various parts of the world, so probably I can't uh, greet them with a single thing as good morning or uh, good evening or good afternoon or good night, probably like uh, Sir Maiga just messaged. It's almost 9.30 there. But uh, yes, um, thank you for joining in. and. Um, 
showing your interest in this subject so i'm uh, quite overwhelmed by uh, this response so let me just uh, get going um, and uh, before i just go in thank you uh, apc for this opportunity uh, i have been associated with apc uh, since i have been uh, part of uh, icc conference uh, multiple times but this is great to be uh, speaking uh, at this webinar and uh, when i saw other webinars in this series i was uh, excited that okay so this would be a good platform to uh, talk to a larger audience and share uh, the passion that i have been working on um so yes um uh, i'll just get going uh first of all acknowledgements to all the cops uh, cops being uh, the communities of practice that i have been interacting with uh, and there are many communities by the way so you will come to know about them as we go ahead uh, but uh, i have been fortunate because it's been a mix of uh, multiple communities some of them i have not listed here but yeah overall it has been uh, three parts of that first is uh, rito uh, dr rito ji uh, who actually helped me structure uh, this talk because i had a extensive talk with him about this thing and then there is a community which has been working with me um, through last 8 uh, months or so uh, uh, which is the faculty development uh, team that uh, i have been working with and um, yes um, team at iit bombay x because uh, it's their work that has actually uh, been uh, useful for getting these communities so yes thanks to all the cops and um, let me just get going um, so the title like uh, professor sana was mentioning that it's slightly unusual uh, in terms of uh, um, the context but uh, to give you better context of it i thought i'll just split it into uh, the explanation part of each and every word that we have chosen as the title so yes we uh, start with the building part and as you all know building is not a, a sudden thing it takes uh, time to uh, get it step by step so uh, what i'm going to talk about is a journey that uh, that has happened throughout uh, um, years i i think uh, almost uh, 20 years or so uh, uh, if i don't want to stretch it too far maybe last 10 years is the the actual body of work that i can talk about uh where i started to actually get these communities in action uh so that is about building and uh, yes uh, communities of practice uh is definitely not a single person's job it's a it's a group that is behind it and as i was showing you the acknowledgement slide was just falling short of space now because i couldn't thank um, many people if you can actually ask me um so this is uh, this is a very interesting phenomena and i when i uh, heard about it in the sense when we were working on it in fact if you google for uh, various pages about communities of practice uh, there are various pages uh, even in research uh, domain which talk about that are you aware that you are actually doing communities of practice thing uh, kind of uh, um, uh, pages will come up because that's a very critical point here that lot of people are practicing it not knowing that this is called a community of practice so yeah we uh, we had a group of uh, people who have uh, gone into this and i will be talking about uh, two of such uh, important cases in um, in this journey uh again uh, it is going to be about uh, online education right now because uh, yeah it can be translated to classroom and definitely there are takeaways for people who want to apply it in classrooms but uh, this experience especially that i am going to share today is mainly driven from the online education practices that i was uh, conducting all these years and uh, as the baseline says it's a designer's perspective so designer here is um, not a very global term i am just uh, talking about um, a creative person like an artist and a painter and an illustrator and a cartoonist and an animator and the perspective word is important because like we deal a lot with those drawings with um, single point perspectives and two point perspectives and things like that so i just thought i will uh, go um, slightly creative in that and take some liberty of uh, uh being a designer here so that's what is going to be so 
because I said designer, let me just uh, have a short intro and uh, of what I do. Uh, so I'm a fine arts graduate. I have a degree in uh, advertising. And uh, as everyone does, I actually joined the advertising agency in the initial years. And then I realized that my true calling was animation. Uh, because I was an illustrator, I used to keep sketching and drawing and all that. So uh, because of that passion, I decided to uh, join an animation school in uh, Hyderabad in India, <clears throat> where I was really fortunate to be the first batch student who was trained by Russian animators. And by the way, this was all paper pencil thing. So we were in fact uh, scolded hard <laughs> if we are seen anywhere near the computer uh, labs. Um, but yeah, it had its own um, advantages because uh, we, we can uh, draw better because of uh, this challenge of um, keep your paper and pencil always handy. So this has resulted in a um, lot of uh, <clears throat> drawing and this has helped me in future actually if you look at it. And like every animator does, I also joined the animation studio where we were making India's first animation feature film, like a full length animation feature film. So as you can see till this part, it was uh, a total advertising animation and filmmaking type of career that I was enjoying. Also, but I had a um, I had a pattern. So I had a square and a circle, which uh, you can easily identify now that these were uh, my jobs and my education things. However, I like to put at it as like um, the squares where I was paying to learn and the circles are where somebody pays me to learn. So the jobs were <laughs> good learning for me. And uh, after the film that I was doing, I was uh, basically intrigued with this question that if animation is so powerful, so much powerful that uh, children don't even blink during that, why can't we use it for uh, educational purpose? And by the way, I'm talking about uh, uh, early uh, 20, uh, 2000. So uh, in the search of that, I happened to be at IIT Bombay, where that circle was inside the square now, because I was um, actually... Uh, uh, doing my PhD also um, at the same time when I was working and I was leading a project on creating educational animation. Uh, this is called as Project Oscar for those who just want to uh, uh, take a note of it and maybe you can visit it in some free time but it's an interesting website where we have created open source animation repository. Uh, while doing that I also pursued my PhD and uh, Professor Sana who is the moderator today was my guide and also was uh, Professor Sridhar who just won the ACM award this year. Uh, so yeah, this was a this was an interesting journey and the work that I did there along with uh, the animation repository was uh, video creation for um, educational content. So it was transmitted across the country to all remote centers and all that. So this two experiences actually brought me to the current position where I work as the director of Educational Multimedia Research Center. So since uh, I am on this topic of EFMRC, it's better that I explain what is this all about for the benefit of our uh, foreign friends. Uh, Educational Media Research Centers is a setup by um, Government of India. It is present in 22 cities in the country. As you can see, the spread is totally covering the country from the length and breadth of it. Um, all places have at least the presence. Of the, so that has resulted into a good uh, content creation, around 20,000 programs. Uh, and by programs, I mean um, e-courses e, uh, e and MOOCs and uh, television programs, uh, channels which are run into local languages. So, uh, that's the power of, uh, I think, this um, uh, unit, that uh, we have a strong 500 member team of content creators uh, who can actually facilitate uh, easy uh, content creation. Plus, because we are located, each of these 22 places are located on a university campus. That gives a very easy access to academia. And uh, that also results into production of localized content. So. Oh, that is one of the major challenges in Indian uh, context. So this is a crucial point and I really uh, want to uh, tell you that it's a very happy moment for me to be 
uh, working as a director of one of the centers which is located in pune uh, which is near uh, mumbai the nearest metro and those of you who visited mumbai during icc uh, would remember uh, mumbai probably so yes so i am uh, i have been here and um, the the reason that during my iit days the plan of um, creating a mooc uh, when it all started so before that actually i uh, was passionate about animation as you can see uh, even as a fresh uh, project manager at iit bombay i was passionate about animation so when i wanted to do some work in that i realized that i need to go ahead and um, and get more people involved into it and when i have to choose that kind of thing i need to have a tool and for this purpose we chose animation tool called as blender now for those who don't know it blender is a open source 3d animation and modeling tool and it's a very effective tool in fact uh, it has uh, in fact recently as i know uh, there are multiple studios in india which are migrating to blender now from the proprietary tools uh, because of uh, being open source and it has a very very strong community of dedicated uh, developers who work for blender so uh, i wanted a tool which will be robust enough to handle high uh, quality mesh because i was planning to use blender only for educational purposes so i realized that we will have probably lot of mathematical programming to be done so i wanted a robust tool uh, it should support industry standards when the quality uh, is a uh, important thing but i also wanted a game engine uh, which can give me interactive 3d so all these features were available in only one tool which is blender so we chose blender uh, and again in early uh, 2000 uh, blender was not so much popular especially in uh, asian countries uh, there was some uh, groups there were some groups in singapore and uh, there were there was large group in european countries but in asian countries it was not so popular so that was the fundamental task in front of me to get like minded people and i was fortunate because uh, of iit bombay uh, being the place uh, i got a lot of interested which i call them as curious learners to get and help me in the uh, uh, process and the reason we the the plan we chose was to offer workshops we just started visiting colleges uh, wherever there were interested people and started conducting workshops the photograph you see here is the people who have completed the workshop and they are very jubilant and showing the sign which is called as the blender sign which resembles the logo of blender and uh, when we started doing this we not only got the word out that blender is something which is very powerful very useful but we also got a team of co creators we got teaching assistants we got people who would help us in creating slides creating um, examples assignments quiz questions conducting tutorials uh, doing screen recordings doing um, editing at times so we had huge groups and they were geographically divided so if you look at it uh, we had people from all parts of the country nagpur agartala and pune mumbai coimbatore so we we started actually getting these groups and my only objective at that time was to get this group together to start something so that it will help blender uh, dissemination and we started with online tutorials we uh, started uh, recording screens with some audio narration started localizing it in multiple languages using the spoken tutorial project of iit bombay so for those who want to read more about it can also go to that website uh, and the uh, the time came that we actually started off with the first mooc on blender because we had our platform ready called as iit bombay x uh, so when we started thinking of a mooc uh, we got back all these co creators together and we had a huge battery of uh, 25 teaching associates at one time to just launch this course and these were useful because they had different levels of proficiency people were experts in multiple um, expertise of blender like somebody was good at modeling texturing lighting animation uh timeline editing and all that there were different domains uh, involved so some people came from mechanical engineering civil aerospace science um, even commerce graduates uh, so there was no uh, dearth of uh, the domains which were contributing languages obviously i just told you that they were from various parts of the country 
availability was also different like some people were working professionals who would used to come uh, contribute during the weekends the students used to contribute during the uh, weeks in fact by the time we launched the book there were couple of uh, students who had joined a university in us or canada and they were helping us with the different time zone so uh, as a funny thing uh, when i launched the book one uh, particular feedback was that how come i get a feed uh, response to my query within couple of hours even if i posted at 3 am midnight it's because one of my students had uh, uh, who was posted for that job was uh, working at 3 pm of his uh, native time so that's how uh, that's how we got this uh, bunch of te teaching associates uh, helping us in creating this and uh, another interesting example is that what was these pas doing what were these people doing they were assigned a day to man the discussion forum so uh, their entire job was that whatever queries are raised during that day they should be able to answer that they were trained for that and they were really good at it how good just see the example so this is a submission by one of the participants saying that okay you asked for a car animation here is my car animation however this this was the sentence which was interesting uh, the background trees and the houses what you see there are created by my 10 year old kid now in a in a regular thing this will go unnoticed because it is just a submission received and the submission will be tested uh, the text is uh, not uh, paid enough attention to but uh, if you see uh, my uh, teaching associate shivam ori who is uh, just writing below uh in fact caught this with a very vigilant eye and not only replied to the person but escalated it to me saying that uh, here is somebody who has a 10 year old kid working on blender and then we uh, got in touch with them and in fact i had a video call with these uh, people and i was surprised to see kids of year age 8 and 10 uh, i can be very sure about their ages because they are showing their age by their fingers there so uh, so these two kids actually were learning under the login id of their father because they were under age for creating a login id on iit bombay x however but they were so good with blender that they they wanted to contribute in the assignments and uh, other things now what i want your attention to be brought into is that such a incident such a interesting piece of information that uh, that people are enjoying the course they are contributing in the course they are participating in the course will go unnoticed otherwise and i am talking about large numbers here because uh, this course was not just um, for a couple of hundred of people but there were thousands of people and i'll come to that later so getting such kind of information through this it's like uh, pin in a haystack but my teaching associates actually managed to do that and therefore uh, we realize that what we are doing is what we can call it as community of practice uh how do we do that so there are three uh, important things here the first one is uh, coming together under a similar cause uh, the second one is to practice uh, various techniques to improve yourself um, create tacit knowledge and then transfer that to each other so that we have a community of people practicing that and then we again uh, they themselves create more communities for that so that's how uh, the theory of uh, cop works you have a reference here uh, very seminal work done by lev and wenger there so you can revisit that but most importantly when we try to uh, check out how we are doing about that this is how uh, i can um, summarize it so we were under the domain of uh, 3d animation and we were very passionate about blender and uh, that's what our uh, group had come together for and um, the practices that we were the part practice part was creating video tutorials interactive sessions uh, moderating the discussion forums uh, creating assignment giving feedback uh, and co creation basically so these are the practices that uh, uh, we were following and finally Uh, the community was built up of all these experts where we had uh, so much so that some of the teaching associates who uh, were part of uh, this mooc uh, were offering their own workshops in their cities for uh, the kids in their various age groups right from school children to uh, the adults they were offering workshops now this is where the community uh, 
uh, of practice comes into picture and if i translate that to numbers probably uh, this is what we could get through uh, we have three ebooks and uh, maybe i'll request uh, uh, my cops which are already um, online right now to share the links in the chat now this is another example of how uh, communities are helping me so as i speak here there are a few people in the participants who are from the community that i am working so we have a practice of um, uh, responding on chat messages um, for the crucial clues that i am just talking about so you, maybe you can post about oscar website and so on and so forth so we have three ebooks we have uh, four online courses created so far used for blender and other things we have five moocs on the topic of blender now uh, this is uh, a high number because there are not many moocs available even on commercial websites uh, uh, on the topic of blender and modeling uh, there are very few moocs available uh, but most of them are paid and uh, things like that so we have 11 offerings of those moocs so far uh, what these things have also resulted in generating interest among the learners so learners have come up with uh, undergraduate projects of using blender for various things as uh, diverse as uh, using it for animation to show sign language so just the hand animation which will show sign language for the people who are uh, hearing and speech disabled to creating mathematics and geometry problem solving um, things using the projects we had summer internships and all this while we have been publishing our results through uh, research papers uh, now with the community has grown to more than 50 tas and there are expert practitioners there um, who are uh, doing really good in the industry also and uh, we had all these courses and offerings had a registration of more than 45000 learners and i am happy to report that it has a good completion rate of nearly 40% uh where people have completed the course and actually given a good thumbs up for the quality of the course which may have resulted in getting us nominated for the edx prize of the year uh, 2019 and um, uh, although we didn't win it but uh, getting a chance to be in the top 10 courses that edx offered in the year 2019 itself was a big boost for all of us and we really uh, 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 owe it to this bunch of community so that's the uh, community of practice story for the animation uh, group that i was just uh, talking about so i see that uh, there are a couple of chat messages floating here but i am not uh, going to uh, uh, get there because there are not many questions there but uh, before i uh, go to the next so by the way you can uh, follow the process of uh, where am i in the presentation by looking at the top bar here uh so before i part uh, as i was saying this particular community of practice is not about fostering the knowledge uh, part of it but it is also about commercial growth so when i was expecting that uh, my uh, team members will call me for a query on uh, how to do this uh, extrude effect in a staircase or how to create a, a mobile app using blender or something like that i started getting calls for telling me that uh, i don't know how to operate a paypal account because i have just won a championship and they have sent me money through paypal and i don't know about it or uh, some client overseas has paid me in a bitcoin so how to encash a bitcoin now these queries um, are uh, really funny for me uh, because first of all i didn't know the answer but more so it is satisfying that uh, i can see that the people have a, a nice growth path in terms of what skills they have acquired through participating in this uh, community so uh, that is where i thought was a interesting part here and uh, as we were uh, working on uh, the animation program uh, the courses uh, i was also participating in other programs of iit bombay x one of them being uh faculty development courses and uh, professor fatak who was uh, the evangelist uh, who is the evangelist for uh, this entire process in india uh, actually <clears throat> suggested that uh, why don't we get into that and that is where we realized that uh, 
it's a huge problem to solve because faculty needs to be trained in terms of uh, adding a pedagogy <coughs> and uh, technology and uh, designing of e content mm, trying effective uh, online teaching learning practices so these are the these are the challenges that uh, we were having but if you match them with the scale part of it it's really huge because we are talking about some 1000 close to 1000 universities i think the nearest number is 990 something right now in india but it's a huge number so how to get across this many people and once we had iit bombay x in hand we decided that one of the natural choices to address this problem was a mooc uh, so by mooc using a mooc we can actually address the scale factor easily so that's the upside of it you can uh, get them online and reach out to them and all that however on the flip side we realized that mooc has a problem of attrition not many people who enroll complete it um, there is a issue about engagement and learner diversity there are issues about pedagogical design so we uh, we were we were kind of uh, working towards solving uh, this particular problem also that's where we uh, realized that creating communities will uh, help us also in this domain so uh, this can actually uh, help us in fixing most of the problems that i mentioned there and enhance the overall online teaching learning experience for the learners and in that case when when we were doing that the basis used was the learner centric mooc model now this is a this separate uh, theme altogether because i uh, i'm not going to spend a lot of time here but uh, it is very important to uh, at least highlight a few things so the learner centric mooc model is a co creation at the educational technology uh, department at iit bombay where we got together and figured out how we can address the uh various elements uh, of a traditional mooc which lack uh, the factors that i just mentioned and then we also realized that most of the models available are uh, theoretical models which talk about need this need that and others however there is no uh, there is no uh, prescription available there is no uh, guideline available of how to go about it therefore we focused a lot on uh, the prescriptive part of it Uh, in fact to the level that we have created multiple um, um what you say um, uh, on on our website uh, we have constructors to create these elements so you want to create a, a video we suggest that don't just create a video but have a reflection spot in the video which will make it interactive and if you know want to know how to do that there is a constructor available so this is how we uh, thought of um, uh went for that and then we realized that a learner centric mooc model as a base coupled up with a community of practice which will actually help us out in getting off the ground for the problem that we started off with here is a link for the uh, model so maybe you can just go ahead and uh, visit that later on uh, without uh, leaving me here alone uh, but anyway so uh, when we started off this uh how did we go about it so we just identified the toppers of each course uh, and made it into a small community now this toppers were um, trained to handle queries for the next offering so what we used to have is that um, the 10 or 15 toppers of every course which we have offered uh were supposed to be the discussion for a moderators or the teaching associates for the next course that way we got a large number rather than depending on one or two tas that is a typical practice we got a huge battery of people this time and that facilitated us that we can give real time responses and uh, people can ask queries uh, throughout the course in fact uh, some of the elements of uh, the learner centric mooc model uh, suggest that there is a there is a well designed activity for um, nurturing or fostering uh peer interaction peer learning so all these things which were the necessity uh suddenly became a possibility now for us because we could implement them using this workforce that we had uh 
this also resulted in various online communities created they used multiple ict tools to have their own so they used the whatsapp groups there were slack groups there are uh, there are there are facebook pages about it so we have a, a blend of uh, technology and pedagogy to uh, to get there we also incentivize these people who were doing a great job uh, using the csr funding available in the country we we felicitated them for their um, help throughout the course that they had extended all these things actually bit by bit uh, added to the whole thing and uh, if i bring back the uh, cop slide here this is the summary that i can suggest that we were in the domain of uh, effective integration of ict we are we are passionate about uh, research based on um, the teaching strategies and uh, of course we were very passionate about the learner centric approach learner being the first uh, in our uh, list and we practiced uh, various uh, material curricular material was created uh, courses were created uh, and again what i bring out is like uh, sharing the contextualized best practices so what works in my state in front of my students in my college is shared with others and so that they know about it and, uh, and they can build up upon it so this was another very good uh, factor that has helped uh, in this uh, process and uh, definitely the focus was also on peer interaction and peer learning to be facilitated through all these discussion and we have seen uh, most of our research papers that we have published have uh, evidences of that and that's how we created a a, a bunch of communities of course designers of uh, uh, teaching associates mentors local facilitators and moderators and so on and so forth so uh, if i just uh, put them into the numerical part of it uh, five mooks created uh, during this period of uh, uh, various online courses for organizations and universities were also created apart from these mooks where uh, we had a focus group of maybe university a asking a training session on how to create learner centric online content or especially during the pandemic we were flooded with requests and um, i think uh, each one of us did a lot of faculty uh, development uh, training sessions uh, because we realized that the demand is so high right now that we need to uh, split ourselves and get into our own communities and try to do that so these things um, uh, have the importance here and as i said earlier also all this through we have been tracking our uh, data and publishing about it uh, about research projects that we are doing uh, but the reach out is really high so we have uh, uh, now this 10000 is very high because we are talking about teachers here and as we all know if we can train teachers we reach to a factor of at least 40 uh when we talk to a teacher so this is how we feel that uh, this has been a very uh, a different journey altogether and now what has happening is that uh, through these uh, these communities uh, we are contributing at various levels right from our colleges or institutes that we are working with from there to the universities or the clusters to the ministry directly because uh, we are we are um, Um, uh, talking to ministry about uh, incorporating best practices in terms of the video creation the uh, course design um, making it engaging and so on and so forth because uh, one of the flagship platform of uh, our country is swayam which has one of the the largest uh, user base so this is uh, this is what we feel is uh, getting into and uh, therefore uh, i think it's already uh 1050 so uh i just want to leave you with this that uh, in this era of uh, pandemic we don't want to see this picture quite often yes we are infectious uh but uh, we are a good virus so yeah so you come to us then we get you into a community and then you create community then just keep spreading this virus uh uh here is a way to participate we have a website uh, lcmmodel.org uh slash participate where there is a form in which uh, you can be part of uh, such communities so um, yeah uh, we are a good virus so uh, we would like you to be on board with us for uh, this kind of thing uh, 
uh, you can reach me on the email id uh, that i'm showing here and um, yeah you can also visit my website there are a couple of interesting stories on my blog where i have written extensively about uh, the experiences throughout this journey so yeah i would like to now uh, get some questions if there are any okay uh, thank you very much dr samir this was a very vast uh, experience that you shared you know ranging from animation design to faculty development program getting people together uh, it's a very interesting narrative that you shared with us uh, it's actually a bit of a clarification it's 10:40 not 10:50 so we do have uh, some oh. time for interaction and q&a so let me uh, throw it open to the participants and the attendees and also the other panelists uh, uh, so if you have any questions please type them in q and a and uh, samir will be able to answer them i'll i'll just moderate the questions so any comments any questions uh, please use the q and a and excuse me for the noise in the background i live in a campus with lots of animals so that can't be helped uh, samir we do have one question so far uh from uh, sita devi who is a faculty member in an engineering college and she wants to become a member of the blender community and i think many others also might have this question that you talked about the uh, learner centric mooc and the faculty development but is the blender project still going on and is it possible for people to become part of that community yes yeah 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 it's a good question and it's a good reminder for me to um, get couple of uh, loose ends tied up very soon um, so yes uh, in fact uh, after i have taken up as the director of educational media research center i am uh, going to offer a series of courses on animation for education that's my uh, agenda item uh, the update is that this course has been approved by the uh, academic council of uh, pune university so by next semester i am hoping to start the courses but what is more interesting for all of you is that we are also launching a website called as edblender.in uh, this edblender is exclusively for educational blender work and uh, similar to lcm uh, model slash participate we will be having a form on edblender uh, slash participate uh, for those who want to contribute in that and that will also have links for learning blender and uh, participating in the blender activities in future if you already know blender then you can uh, become a teaching associate or you can run the course yourself and things like that but if you want to learn blender we'll have pointers for that uh, even now if you visit i think uh, the website is up but we have not started uh, populating it with uh, all the other details but uh, for the time being uh, i think you can just write to me and uh, i will just log it uh, because uh we don't have that particular page ready as such for the uh, form to participate into but uh, that's a good point uh, in fact uh, we will be approaching to uh, our uh, learners once again when we actually launch the courses and other things and we have a strong database of around 45000 learners already with us uh, so in that case uh, we would be doing that uh, so that is that is nice and thank you for your interest i i'm so happy that i got another person interested in uh, contributing in blender welcome uh there is a message from lungxiang wang on the q and a saying uh, he would like to answer this question li live uh, lungxiang is that valid uh, no it's so no it's just actually i just see i may ah, i just okay. try to okay no problem i just managed it so yeah <laughs> okay okay thanks uh any other questions or comments because uh, see what was interesting about this talk is it's very heavily in practice Uh, based in practice but there's also a theoretical basis to it so that uh, juxtaposition was also interesting uh, there is a question from tanya mitrovich the president of apc current president uh, tanya uh, appreciates your talk samir and the question is could you please show us examples of the activities you used in moocs to address the low retention rate low engagement and so on oh okay uh, that's uh, that's very interesting i am very excited to show that part always um let me just uh, open the uh, mooc on blender first of all uh because that would be uh, one of the examples that i really can showcase mm. <clears throat>
yeah so i i am not uh, opening the one which is uh, which was uh, in 2018 or something i will just show you a recent one mm. but the activity is the same so you can enjoy that okay so if you can see the screen now uh, this is uh, the iit bombay x platform that i'm showing you this is what you can see on the left hand side i am in the course called as a basic 3d modeling using blender and if you can see the the outline is shown here about the course chapter and wherever i am but uh, the interesting part comes here so this is a this is a video or uh, explanatory uh, video about how to set up the camera in blender now you all will agree it's a particularly a very skill uh, based thing that uh, it's now going to the software and things like that however we try to combine that with the conceptual idea about what is a camera like what is like to know about uh, uh, so this this thing is this starts with uh, how to uh, how to understand so i use a technique that okay this is what i uh, you all are seeing right now and uh, everyone can see whatever we are showing through the camera but when we go ahead you can see that uh, i try to switch on another camera to show that okay the view finder is showing you what so this is actually the setup that i am standing in but you can't see everything else so the concept of camera is established uh, through this kind of video and then we go to the software part of it like how do you do that in blender but uh, more interestingly uh, what we so we go here and we show blender and how to add a camera how to move a camera what are the shortcuts for that so all that is shown in a screen cast uh, where we also show the uh, the uh, keyboard and the uh, mouse inputs that uh, are required here but after the video what you see here is a activity now this comes from the learner centric mooc model this is a learn learning by doing activity and here what we are telling them is that download this blender file that blender file actually has objects this is the object that is there in the blender file but there is no camera in that now what we have told is that you have to add a camera but when you add a camera it will go to a different place altogether it will use its own x y z coordinates and we have placed this object somewhere else in this particular file so what we have telling them is that okay move the camera in such a play way that uh, following view is achieved now there's a tricky question here we are telling them following view is achieved so lot of people if you see that uh, they have to post everything here in this discussion thread now if i open the discussion thread you can see that uh, people will start posting under the camera setup activity and um, so this is how uh, this tdd uh, user called tdd is posting and 123 uh, is posting and tanvi is posting and someone else is posting but if you as you go down you see somebody called anshu gurjar who has posted totally different thing uh, not in terms of uh, just the camera placement but he has also gone ahead to do some texturing and lighting and things like that and this one actually uh, surprises me because what they need to know about how to place a camera they are doing that but they are also going beyond that and if i may show you another uh, example of that where people have gone beyond merely uh, copying what we have suggested them so yeah so these are uh, videos and slides that we have given but the moment we ask questions such as this that uh, you have to show uh, how to create the chess piece people are posting and th this was a mandatory thing is that that when you want to post this thing you have to also draw and post how you created it so you have to show your paperwork also and we were surprised to see that almost everyone uh, operated in a different manner to get to this point and this was a interesting uh, discussion because lot of people were now chatting about how you uh, did a mistake here you shouldn't have added a cylinder here you could have just extruded from uh, the existing cylinder here and so on and so forth so even in in uh, another thing where i just want to show you that uh, when people actually uh, yes so this is also a interesting example where when people create something else that, than what they are supposed to do like this one uh, instead of just a chess piece the person created a entire chess board and submitted the entry the moment i saw that and there were so many people liking it 
i requested the person to record a video of how he did it and to my fortune this person was a teacher so veerabhadra the teacher actually posted a video of this thing in the moment uh, he posted the video you can see that uh, people are started responding to that okay uh, i have watched your video and created the models on chessboard and pawn and however i am not able to get uh, x y z and to that uh, veerabhadra started responding and uh, so on and so forth so this not only created a different uh, range of things but uh, we suddenly started getting chess boards with uh, metallic finish with uh, silver and gold combination and uh, granite and marble combination and so on and so forth so this this is where i feel that the activities uh, moderated by the teaching associates because of the presence being uh, really live a uh, live presence of the teaching associates have helped in uh, getting more out of what was expected uh, during that time so these are uh, some of the examples i just thought of sharing with you okay thanks very much samir actually one word in a slide stood out where you said that the assignments should also be flauntable so yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like uh, you're trying to even in a mooc setting where scale is very large and distance you know not just the physical distance but also the social and psychological distance is large you're trying to bring in this aspect of personalization and ownership and right. using your large community that you have built up in order to do this right. so that that's interesting yeah so this one uh, this one so this is the flauntable part of it that uh, that the the top uh, performers of the week will go on to the facebook page and uh, we have seen that lot of people actually start sharing it because okay my uh, image is right now on uh, image of the week or model of the week kind of thing so that was that uh, flauntable thought and the second one which i was talking about like achievable so this was uh, very easy in terms of how to get it there but when people started exploring it and exploiting the facilities available in blender they really started enjoying it so you can give a very small activity to begin with but you can just go with the flow as it uh, and uh, by the way i had uh, experience uh, of uh, interacting with various such submissions because we offered it multiple times we learned over time and modified our things as we go ahead okay uh, let's take one more question i think this will be the last question because it's a really heavy question as to say and it's a two part question the second part i'll be asking uh, the first part is from professor patel uh, which asks can you comment on how to formalize and speed up this process of building communities of practices of teachers in various domains across the entire spectrum of education so you know scaling in terms of numbers in terms of diverse domains and so on uh, when the numbers are very high how do you do it and let me ask you maybe a slightly less ambitious but equally important question uh, related to this that if somebody wanted to replicate your model of communities of practice maybe it's in a you know in a country which doesn't have 10 million people but maybe 1 million people or a smaller number of people you know any recommendations you would have to replicate your model and go ahead so the scaling part and the replication yeah yeah i think uh, the word you used is very important here and that's also the word uh, which is crucial here uh, the replication model so this is not a scaling model so i don't want to flaunt the numbers of reaching out to 10000 teachers but rather i would like to flaunt that there are 15 teachers right now in this group who are doing the uh, learner centric approaches in in their own ways they are doing it in their own classes some of them are doing in their online teaching whether they are creating open education resources for uh, unesco or uh, various purposes when they are applying it uh, i think that is where the purpose is getting served so it's not a uh, it's not a uh, direct pyramid like we you just expand the base by creating more users but like uh, in fact uh, professor fatak has uh, taught this thing that uh, the best option uh, that you can leave a mark with is that you can create another summit if you can create that i think that would be a beginning of a whole new cycle altogether so i have always been uh, really attracted toward that idea of uh, keep creating summit wherever possible and uh, like i said i am very happy to share that uh, there are people who are actually offering their own courses and uh, in fact uh, uh, making money out of it to be self sustainable for that 
so these kind of things actually attract me so the first part uh, in answer to that would be uh, instead of just the uh, reach out it is more uh, uh, replica model right you create uh, similar uh, people like you uh, that that is going to work and uh, second uh, would be just because uh, if you don't focus on the number game so uh, that is what i and uh, thankfully or maybe i should not be saying that but pandemic situation has uh, brought all these points in a nice scanner right now so people suddenly realize that uh, they can do so much just by being at home and um, interacting with each other through online mode um, this community is by the way the community of practice i was just mentioning in my slide has never met each other actually in person and last 8 months we have been working uh, a lot on various aspects of uh, getting this faculty development programs or other uh, programs up uh, from the ground and this has uh, this has been a very nice uh, guiding force for me so maybe i i don't know how much can i answer his question <laughs> but yeah we are trying uh, to do that uh thanks sameer and uh, thanks also to deepak fatak who's responded to this saying that we need yeah. both a bottom up replication approach as well as a large scale program which is top down and both must work in conjunction so hopefully that will uh, you know address the large problem we have here yeah. uh i think okay we have time for one last quick question it's uh, we have 4 minutes left i see one question on chat and let's see if we can take it very quickly um so it it's asking about community of practices i think across people do you think it affects micro practice which teachers do individually do you have any comments about that sameer um yeah uh, yeah it's uh, what i have experienced throughout uh, these things is that uh, whatever uh, Uh, whatever you plan to do so like i said in the beginning itself uh, it works with the model of domain practice and community so the moment we agree on a domain we agree on certain uh, themes certain ways of doing things uh, then there is uh, a little gap of uh, other things slipping in uh, most of the times uh, i have seen that the groups have uh, a connect with this particular uh, community for a cause and they may be having some other ways of doing things uh, elsewhere but the but the micro practice part like uh, whatever you do i think uh, this is also how things will grow that the theory whatever i learned out of uh, uh, learner centric approaches or uh, uh, how we can actually have a activity to uh, give it out i have practiced it in my own way and uh, i have my own results i can come back to community and cross check if if they are working out or not and then probably take a call but this i think uh, is only solvable or um, uh, possible when we have a very strong community to uh, to talk to each other and help out each other so yeah there is a chance of this micro practicing uh, getting uh, some problems but uh, i think it is solvable in, at least in my case because interpretation will be there by everyone in the way that they want to uh, do it themselves because they have their own contextual problems in front of them they have their own uh, other uh, specific issues so yes i don't know how much i have answered that okay thanks uh, very much dr samir sastrapade this is a this has been an very interesting discussion also after your uh, diverse talk um i think we all really enjoyed it and appreciated it uh, thanks to all the participants too for uh, being here this has been a lively interactive session and thanks to apsi for uh, setting this up so i think it's uh, almost 11 here yes. in india almost one hour over and we can uh, wind up this webinar uh, thanks very much also to alex who's the apsi managing secretary yeah 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 works yes. behind thanks, the scenes alex. to yeah. make sure this was a smooth uh, experience uh thank you everyone and we'll sign off right now bye thank you